You know that free chat GPT you've been using? Well, get ready to see ads between your prompts. And before you panic about whether you should upgrade or jump ship to another AI tool, here's what's wild. While OpenAI is inserting ads into your workflow, Google just promised that Gemini will stay completely ad-free. So which one's actually trying to help you, and which one just sees you as inventory to monetize? Welcome back to bitbias.ai, where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts with our free weekly newsletter. Click the link in the description below to subscribe. You will get the key AI news, tools, and learning resources to stay ahead. So, in this video, I'm breaking down the biggest AI news from this week that's going to directly affect how you use these tools. We're talking OpenAI's advertising rollout and what it really means for free users, Google's new feature that can literally read your entire digital life to give you better answers, and the Elon Musk lawsuit that just got messy enough to reveal what was actually happening behind closed doors at OpenAI. First up, let's talk about those ChatGPT ads and why this changes everything about the free tier. OpenAI's ad experiment, the free tier just got complicated. Here's the thing about free AI tools. You've always known they weren't really free, right? Someone's paying for those massive GPU farms that process your prompts. Until now, OpenAI's bet was simple. Keep people hooked on the free version, convert enough to paid tiers, and charge enterprises serious money. But apparently, that wasn't cutting it anymore. OpenAI just announced they're testing ads inside ChatGPT for free and go to your users in the United States starting in the coming weeks. Now, they're saying all the right things. The ads will be clearly labeled, they won't influence how ChatGPT answers your questions, and the model's behavior stays the same. But here's where it gets interesting. This is OpenAI's first direct experiment with in-product advertising. Not just a sponsored blog post or a partnership announcement, but actual ads sitting right there between you and your AI assistant. Think about what that means for a second. ChatGPT has become a daily tool for millions of people. Students use it for homework. Developers use it for debugging code. Writers use it to beat writer's block. And now there's going to be a commercial break in the middle of that workflow. At the same time, and this feels very intentional, OpenAI expanded ChatGPT Go globally. That's their $8 per month plan that sits between the free tier and the more expensive pro subscriptions. Previously, it was only available in select regions. Now it's everywhere ChatGPT operates, including the US. The timing here isn't subtle. Introduce ads to free users, then offer them an affordable escape route. The company's saying this is about giving users more flexibility, especially in regions where premium pricing doesn't make sense. But wait until you see what Google's doing in response, because this is turning into a full-on strategy war. Google throws shade, Gemini stays ad-free. Right as OpenAI announced the ad test, Google came out swinging. They confirmed that Gemini will remain completely ad-free. No testing, no gradual rollout, just a flat statement that they're not going down that road. And if you've been paying attention to how these AI companies position themselves, this is huge. Google's already monetizing you in a dozen other ways. They've got your search history, your email, your location data, and they serve you ads across every other product they make. But for Gemini, they're drawing a line. The message is clear. We're not desperate enough to ruin the user experience with ads. And we want you to remember that when you're choosing between us and ChatGPT. This is where the competition gets fascinating. OpenAI doesn't have Google's ecosystem. They can't cross-subsidize ChatGPT with revenue from search or cloud services. They need ChatGPT itself to generate cash, which means subscriptions and now ads. Google, on the other hand, can afford to keep Gemini clean because they're playing a longer game. They want you inside their ecosystem. And once you're there, they've got plenty of other ways to make money off you. But here's the twist nobody's talking about yet. Google just rolled out something that makes their ad-free promise even more valuable. And it's either incredibly useful or deeply unsettling, depending on how you feel about privacy. Personal intelligence, when your AI actually knows you. 
Google introduced a new beta feature for Gemini called Personal Intelligence, and it's exactly what it sounds like. This lets Gemini reason across your entire Google ecosystem. Gmail, Google Photos, YouTube history, search history, all of it connected. So the AI can give you answers that actually understand your context. Here's how this works differently from what we had before. Previously, Gemini could pull information from individual Google apps if you told it where to look. You'd say, check my Gmail for that flight confirmation and it would search your email. But personal intelligence connects the dots between apps without you having to spell it out. Let me give you the example Google shared because it shows you exactly where this is going. Josh Woodward, who's the VP of the Gemini app at Google Labs, was waiting at a tire shop and couldn't remember his car's tire size. Instead of just finding the size, Gemini looked at his Google photos, noticed he had family road trip pictures, and suggested all weather tires. In another instance, he forgot his license plate number, and Gemini pulled it from a photo he'd taken months ago. Now think about what that actually means. Your AI assistant isn't just searching your data anymore. It's interpreting your life. It's connecting a video you watched on YouTube with an email you received and a photo you took, then using all of that to predict what you actually need. Google's being very careful about how they're positioning this. Personal intelligence is off by default. You have to actively opt in, and even after you do, Gemini will only use this deeper access when it thinks it's actually helpful. They're clearly aware that not everyone wants AI analyzing their personal photos, emails, and viewing history. But here's the part that should make you pause. Once you opt in, you're trusting that Google's definition of helpful aligns with yours. You're trusting that the AI knows when it should connect those dots and when it should leave your data siloed. And most importantly, you're trusting that this capability won't eventually become the default, just like so many other opt-in features that quietly became mandatory over time. This is the trade Google's making with you. No ads in Gemini, but they get something potentially more valuable. They get permission to teach their AI how you think, how you live, and what patterns exist across every digital interaction you have inside their ecosystem. And if that works, they won't need ads in Gemini. They'll just make their ads everywhere else that much more effective. The Musk versus OpenAI fight gets personal. While all this is happening, Elon Musk and OpenAI are tearing into each other in public ahead of their April trial, and the documents they're releasing are absolutely wild. Musk started by sharing excerpts from a private 2017 journal kept by OpenAI co-founder Greg Brockman. These notes describe internal conversations about turning OpenAI into a public benefit corporation and raise concerns about how much control Musk wanted over the organization even back then. Sam Altman fired back hard. He accused Musk of cherry-picking material to fit his legal narrative and then published his own notes claiming that Musk had proposed raising $80 billion to fund a self-sustaining city on Mars. Even more bizarre, Altman alleges that Musk outlined a long-term succession plan that would eventually place control of artificial general intelligence under Musk's children. Let that sink in for a second. We're not just talking about who controls a company. We're talking about who controls AGI, and apparently one proposal involved a multi-generational dynasty. OpenAI escalated things further by publishing a blog post titled The Truth Elon Left Out, arguing that when you read Brockman's full journal entries instead of the selective quotes Musk shared, you get a completely different story. Musk's response? He tweeted, Can't wait to start the trial. The discovery and testimony will blow your mind. And here's the kicker. Reports say he's seeking up to $134 billion in damages. This isn't a normal lawsuit. This is turning into a public spectacle that's going to expose exactly what was happening inside OpenAI during its earliest and most critical years. For anyone who cares about where AI is heading, this trial matters. It's going to reveal what promises were made, what deals were cut, and what vision these people actually had for the future of artificial intelligence before the money got too big and the stakes got too high. 
two other moves that show where this is all going. Before we wrap, there are two smaller announcements that actually reveal a lot about the direction AI companies are taking. First, OpenAI invested heavily in Merge Labs, a brain-computer interface startup co-founded by Sam Altman. They wrote the largest check in Merge Labs' $250 million seed round. This isn't a side project. Merge Labs is trying to bridge biological and artificial intelligence to maximize human ability, agency, and experience. That's a fancy way of saying they want to connect AI directly to your brain. While the technology is still early stage, the scale of funding and OpenAI's involvement signals serious intent. This is about moving AI beyond screens and keyboards toward direct neural interaction. And whether that excites you or terrifies you probably depends on how much you trust these companies with the tech they already have. Second, OpenAI launched ChatGPT Translate, a new tool that supports more than 50 languages and lets you adjust tone and context after translating. This positions translation as a communication task, not just a word-for-word -word conversion, which makes it useful for professional and cross-cultural work. Together, these moves show OpenAI's dual strategy. Invest in far future technologies that could completely redefine human AI interaction, while also building practical everyday tools that keep users engaged right now. It's the same playbook Google's using with personal intelligence. Give people immediate value while building towards something much bigger. The privacy alternative. Nobody's talking about. And just to close this out on an interesting note, Moxie Marlinspike, who co-founded Signal, just launched Confer. It's a chat GPT-style AI assistant designed to prevent data collection entirely. It uses end-to-end -end encryption and trusted execution environments, so your conversations are never stored, accessed, or monetized. This matters because as OpenAI and Google compete to make AI more personalized, more integrated, and yes, more monetizable, there's a growing number of people who want AI that just does the job without tracking everything they say. Confer won't have the ecosystem integration that Gemini offers or the brand recognition that ChatGPT has, but it represents a third path. Privacy-first AI that treats your data like it actually belongs to you. Closing. So here's where we're at. ChatGPT is testing ads. Gemini is staying ad-free, but wants access to your entire digital life. Elon and Sam are about to air all their dirty laundry in court. And somewhere in the background, companies are building brain implants and privacy-first alternatives while the mainstream tools fight over how much of your attention and data they can monetize. The question you need to ask yourself is simple. Which trade-off are you actually willing to make? Ads in exchange for free access? Total integration in exchange for zero ads? Or maybe you're willing to give up some features just to know your data stays yours? Let me know in the comments which approach you're going with, because this isn't just about AI anymore. It's about what kind of relationship you want with the tools that are quickly becoming as essential as your phone or your email. And that choice is only going to get more complicated from here.